Hey guys, everyone would agree with me if I say that the NCLEX is a hard exam. Plenty have failed, but plenty have also passed. Most of the complaints that I have heard mostly is about the fact that there are more content questions in the NCLEX that is related to priority and delegation in correlation to interventions and pharmacology or medications, and of course also the fact that there are more infection control questions on the NCLEX. Now, the majority of the NCLEX takers who both passed and failed had both mentioned that this is a fact in their exam when they took their NCLEX exam. And even the NCSBN themselves, which is the org organization who makes the questions um, for the NCLEX also verified this fact. So yes, if you are or will be taking your NCLEX at least this year, then you will encounter more of the infection control and prioritization and delegation questions in your NCLEX exam. Now with this information, then we obviously know that we need to focus on this area a lot more for the NCLEX. So this is really all to our advantage. At the end of the day, knowing this information can only benefit us in helping us pass the NCLEX exam. Now, when we are talking about safety and infection control, we need to simplify things and really understand what is infection control and what the NCLEX wants with the topic of safety and infection control. Everyone taking the NCLEX or is about to take the NCLEX has realized that the NCSBN had changed some of the content format of the NCLEX. One of the biggest changes includes obviously the percent amount of the safety and infection control that will be on the NCLEX. Now, the safety and infection control section now makes up to 10 to 14 percent of all the questions in your NCLEX exam. That means that if you are able to get the average of about 130 to 150 questions in your NCLEX exam, then you are guaranteed to receive between about 15 to 20 questions that is related to infection control. Now, even if we get the least amount of questions, which is about 75 questions in our NCLEX exam, we can still receive about seven to nine questions that would be related to infection control, safety and infection control. Now, with this in mind, this is a huge help for us if we do well, obviously, on these questions. Now, I personally don't think that infection control is a difficult area because I believe that most of the nursing students never really studied, quote-unquote, infection control or focus on the area when they were in nursing school. Therefore, this lack of knowledge did not prepare the majority of the nursing students for these type of questions in their NCLEX exam. So let's simplify the safety and infection control information that we need to know for the NCLEX. So the first thing that we need to know is to understand each category and really understand which particular diseases belongs to each particular category. So we have to know this by heart and to do this we really need to know the basics of each disease. So first let's go over standard precautions, right? Now with standard precautions it is always done in congruent with other types of precautions, obviously. Now, standard precautions simply are the basic level of infection control that should be used in the care of all patients all the time. Now, basically, we use standard precautions in the care of all patients to reduce the risk of transmission of microorganisms, obviously. Now, when I say standard precaution, we are basically referring to what we call universal precaution. So, as we remember in nursing school, standard precaution applies to blood, all body fluids, secretions, and excretions. Now, on the basic level, standard precautions uses the, the PPE or the personal protective equipment that, that includes gowns, masks, and eye protection. Now, on the next few videos, I will go over more of the topic of infection control and prioritization and we're going to look at the most common types of contents that we might and will encounter in the NCLEX exam.